guys, Jamie here, keeping it quiet. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So in today's video, what am I doing? Um, I woke up this morning, um, it is afternoon now, but uh, when I woke up this morning, the little, uh, where's my finger there, the little blue vat, bowl, whatever you want to call it, um, there, I noticed the fry hadn't have eaten their, uh, or finished their last night's food. So. Uh, scoop most of that out some of the pellets have uh, sunk to the bottom so uh, need to remove that but what I'm thinking of doing is because of all the fish in here ate all their food all the fish in the big blue vat down the bottom ate all their food it's just the little blue bowl vat thing just there and um, they didn't need their food so uh, obviously first thing I did was check the temperature um, and that was pretty much the nail on the head. Uh, that had dropped down overnight um, and this morning was 11 degrees. And obviously fried food is extremely high protein um, and they're obviously not in the mood for it. But yet, while I was down there, I obviously checked the temperature in the larger blue vat here and that was still at 16 degrees. Obviously it's covered um, and a much, much bigger volume of water. So. Uh, yeah, although I didn't want to mix uh, the Yashiki Goi fry I got from Jack and the uh, my own spawning from the fishes in here, um, looks like I'm going to have to. Uh, there's still um, a few too small really to go in the holding net here in the main pond because um, some of the fish in there now are over over 20 cm. And, uh, yeah, some of the fry are still teeny teeny tiny. So. Uh, yeah, what we're going to do is uh, get my fry out, have a good look, check for any deformities and then uh, all the fit and healthy ones will go in the blue vat with, uh, with the other fry and then I'll decommission that bowl for now, that will give the blue vat an extra air stone um, and one less pump to be on over winter so save a little bit more electricity again. Um, but yeah, it's still shocking how much money them very switches actually save. Um, my new one hasn't arrived yet for the uh, for the main pond here. But uh, yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's uh, spin you around. Fishies! Spin you around and go and have a look at the fry. Okay. Here's the fry. As you can see, they're all pretty dormant now in there. And let's see what the temperature is now. It's afternoon. Yeah, it has gone up again by a couple of degrees, but 13.7, 13.8. As you can see there, whereas if I quickly just dip it into the uh, bigger vat, that's gone up to 17.3. So a lot, lot warmer in there and a lot, lot more stable. So uh, what I'm going to do, as I said a minute ago, We'll get these out of here, um, have a look and go through them and pop them into the uh, into the big vat. So I'll snap back to you. Uh, right then guys, well that's all the fry in the bowl. I've got a bag ready to float them to bring them up to temperature for the uh, larger vat. And I've got another bucket full of their water to pop them in. Not that you guys can see that. There you go to pop them in once I've had a, a closer look at them. But getting them out now, um, I'm pretty sure it's a mixture of both of the females that laid eggs, because um, it's mainly uh, Chagoy and Matsuba in here by the look of it. And um, although I don't think the Matsuba in the pond uh, released any eggs, um, I do think it was maybe the Beniki Kikuryu because of the amount of bolts that are actually in here as well. Um, as a for instance, this one looks uh, very Karashi Boy like, I believe, to be bolts. Yeah. Again, big linear scales um, down the body. Let me see if I can bring the camera in a bit closer. Give me a second. Okay, 
there. So yeah, I don't know if you guys can quite make it out there, but uh, Deutz fish, linear scales down both sides. So I'm guessing that's an offspring off the uh, Benny Kikikuyu. The biggest one in here, I'm still a bit unsure what it is. It's either a very light chagoy um, or something else. But uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think. I'd say light chagoy personally. But, yeah, there's an awful lot of chags in here. A couple there. Very nice. Come on, Deutz. Yeah, the bigger one out of the two there, Deutz again. Might even be an Agrigoke Deutz, don't know. But yeah, a lot of Deutz ones, and you've got the uh, some of the Matsubas. Very, very nice. And some of the uh, Karashi guys. So yeah, a bit, bit of a plain mix. This one's really nice. Big Chag. Uh, yeah, very nice. But yeah, I'm going to go through these. Um, oh, look at the, the smallest one in here, bless it. Look at the teeny tiny fizzy. Yeah, I'll go through these, check for any major deformities, and then uh, get them into my bucket. And then once I've gone through them all, we'll get them into the, uh, into the vat. The mirror scales on this one, guys. Absolutely stunning. Look. Absolutely stunning. But yeah, we're getting there. Got a few in the bucket so far. No deformities as of yet. Sorry, guys. Have to show you this one again. Another one with full linear scales. Look at that. Chagoy, full linear scales, both sides, absolutely stunning. I found three with full linear scales so far. These are going to be beautiful. Another absolutely stunning one. Linear scales, I hope that's focused. Have a look at the crashy guy. Absolutely stunning. Look at that for linear scales down both sides. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Guys, I think this one has to be my favourite of them all. Deutz Crashy Goy. Beautiful, perfect linear scale pattern. I really hope these are coming out on camera. I really do. Right then guys, well that's all of them. Uh, all 39, I haven't lost any more. Um, and not a single one with a deformity. So, uh, for my first ever spawning of my own fish, I think I've done bloody brilliantly. Um, or the fish have, one or the other. But yeah, I might have only got 41 from the spawning, but after the two that died, left with 39, very healthy, no deformity, fry. Uh, bit of a mix in there, there's still a couple that I'm not too sure about what they might be. But uh, yeah, mainly um, Chagoy, Karashigoy and uh, Matsuba. There's one or two other things in there, like this little one at the top here, not sure what he is, and there's another one of them, slightly bigger, uh, down the bottom there. But, uh, time will tell, time will tell, it is a bit of a shame that I've got to mix them in with the other fry, because I was hoping to make sure I keep one of these, but looking at the linear scale patterns on these, one of them will definitely be grace in my palms, I love the linear look. And for those of you that don't know what linear is, it's uh, a Deutz fish with a perfect lateral line of scales going across the body. Um, but yeah, there's at least eight linear fish in there. Some Karashigoi and some Chagoy. So 
they are going to be fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is get these all in a bag and get them floating in the vat because they've got to come up by about five degrees. About five degrees, so it's going to be a while. So uh, I'll snap back to you when they're in. Right guys, well I've given them plenty of water so they don't acclimatise too quickly. There's a, a side shot of them. Got some absolute beauties in there. So uh, yeah, we're going to get these floated in there. So that doesn't uh, float it away. Put my bit of wood on it. <laughs> yeah, we will have uh, the Shiki Boy Fryer coming and say hello. Yeah, even they're still mixed in sizes from teeny tiny up to mahusive. Uh, I think my jumbo one from my own spawn and it's probably the biggest out of all of them but I've also got the smallest out of all of them but yeah I've got a damn good mix of fry now uh, in there I don't know if you can tell but you've got Yamabukis uh, obviously Kahakus Ochibas again Kiatsuris, Kimatsubas, there's just, I mean the list is endless, some of which I still can't tell what they are, as always, but uh, we will see. But yeah, let them float for a good half an hour, and then uh, as always with my uh, laser thermometer, where's it going, in my pocket. It's not gone down in temperature. These laser thermometers, for people that don't know, if you leave them outside, the coldness affects the uh, glass down there and can give you a false reading. You want to try and keep them at room temperature if you can, because as you saw earlier, this was 17.8, 17.9. It's now showing 16.1 because it was out here. And if you remember, this fact showed 13, which now will probably show, yeah, again, one degree lower. 12 because the thermometer has been outside so with these laser thermometer guys keep them at room temperature don't leave them in your filter house leave them indoors but yeah I'll let them float and then uh, when this bag says the same as what the pond does it doesn't matter if it gives me a false reading as long as both are the same and um, oh there's a really nice uh, Vince would like it, really nice as Sagi down there, just gone under the bag. Just down and run away. Yeah. But yeah, snap back to you in a bizzle. Oh, so while they're floating, um, I've done some water tests. We're all looking good in the uh, big vat for stats. I've also tested the salt level. Um, it's still at 3.6 in there at the minute. Um, whereas the blue, the smaller vat that they've just come from was only at 1.6 so they will gradually be uh, introduced to the pond water so they can get used to that so it's not a big shock to them but while I'm waiting still for them to get to temperature what I thought I might do is uh, obviously this shower is now decommissioned for the winter I won't be needing it for the rest of the winter because I'm not buying any more fish or getting... Uh, separating any more fish where they are is where they're staying um, for the winter so I've got a lot of media in here but I don't want the uh, pump to drop the pump on because there's no point having another filter on there and we only have got one two three four five I don't need more than five filters on one back so uh, what I'm going to do is take the lid off that needs a damn good clean again the only problem with this particular sieve, it does get blocked up quite quickly with your blanket. But all this in here is damn good media. So I'm just going to give it a quick rinse in some pond water and get it out. There we go. Yeah. 
I'll get a quick rinse in some palm water, get most of the blanket weed off. It's still wet at the minute, so we're all good. And then uh, I'm going to pop it in one of the showers on the uh, big back for over winter. So I will snap back to it once I've given it all a clean. That's the first layer all cleaned, so uh, I'll see where I can squeeze it. Right, I'm going to try and squeeze some in here to start off with. Let me just stop the flow coming into this one for a second. This has already been cleaned out. So it should be nice and clean still, yeah. Should be a little bit of room in here for a couple of them. Bits of foam, you'll be surprised how much bacteria sits on the foam. She's got all that kicking around. That comes up over the medium anyway. Oh no, that's still too high. It's a bit of medium there. Okay. Right, yeah. Oh well, one less than Swap that back for that bit of sponge. four in there and for those of you that haven't seen this filter before camera's in the blooming way Oops, so yeah this is a k1 bed the water goes through the uv which is currently switched up up through the k1 so like an upflow filter and then trickles down a trickle tower to oxygenate and give extra bacteria so Jobs are good and on that one I've got uh, four of them medias in there. Put the lid back on. Voila. Right, and then the rest I'm going to put in the big trickle tower. So I might have to take some of the K1 out of there but never mind. And then we'll get that all sorted. I'll snap back to you when I've cleaned the rest. Right, so... Uh, what I'm going to do now is isolate the uh, big trickle tower. Like that, so I can take the lid off. Just cleaned and go in the end. Yeah, I've got uh, the leftover alpha grub from the uh, food factory shower in the main pond, and a load of oyster shells, a bit of pumice, and then I've got this CSM, which is similar to BHM. Oh, there is actually some Biohome Ultimate in here as well that was left over. Not a lot, 200 grams. 
Definitely not going to be able to fit all this cave on back in here. These should take up quite a bit of room in this, uh, in this shower. the filter floss is all squeezed. It's not in here to uh, catch fire, although it does catch some fire, but it's not in here for that purpose. People forget that filter floss sponge um, is more porous pretty much than any actual shower media you can buy, even um, BHM by Home Ultimate. You can't get much more porous than uh, filter floss, so that is why it's in here. It does hold a fair bit of media. I put the lid back on, we open the shower. Okay, that's now spraying the good enough. I think we can see that there. It's spraying the good enough. And that's now coming back out of there. So yeah, I'll sort the media out. And then we'll check on the uh, the fish. Yeah, I had to take out over half the micro K1 in the end, so I've got that all bagged up there, ready to go. And now it's time to check the temperature on the fry. So I lift this back up, and we'll see where we're at. All right, guys, they're now at temperature. As you can probably tell, I've just thrown in a bit of food. And I'm just topping the uh, water level back up. Just done a little bit of a water uh, water change help speed up the temperature and mix in the salt process but they uh, now got just as much pond water in the bag as they do um, the other pond water whatever you want to call it typical airplane go away film in here airplanes on never really scope you to film in did I but yeah all I'm gonna do now is slowly make that way there we go. I don't know if you guys can quite see that there. Do that out. Nope. That's it. Can't be happy enough in there, hopefully over the winter. Got a fair bit of gardening done today as well while I was waiting for all them to acclimatise. They redid all my tree pots and everything. But yeah, they uh, all look hunky dory. It's going to be so difficult to tell the difference between them now until I uh, net them out. But, uh, I'm starting to be able to tell when, when it comes to netting them out. 
that's for sure. Because uh, there's a fair few Jinrin ones in there from Yoshiki Guy. Obviously, I've got no Jinrin, and uh, half of mine that are Doits are all linear anyway. So I very much doubt that any linear ones came from uh, Yoshiki Guy. You never know. But uh, yeah, no, they're all happy. Um, they're all now back munching on the pellets. So that's a bonus. So yeah, that's what I've been up to today. Uh, thank you again all for watching. Please like the uh, video if you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, either either or. Um, and yeah, we will catch you on the next one.